comedian has a very specific job. He or she are truth bomb throwers. That's their job. Their job is not to fix it. Their job is not to help you fix it. Their job is not to fix the world. They're not politicians. They're not policy writers. They're not psychologists. They're not any of those other things. They are observers of life with a very critical eye. They have full permission to be honest as long as they're making you laugh. That's the value exchange, eh? Like if as soon as they stop making you laugh, mm, yeah. they don't really have much of a pull. Well, and this is the tricky thing about this these days because of this thing called cancel culture is that some people in the audience don't think certain topics or perspectives are funny anymore. The thing I love about Jimmy Carr, because I'm a huge fan also, is that at the beginning of his special or his set, he'll say, I will offend you. Just know that you most likely will be offended. It is not personal. This is just what I do. And if you can't handle it, take care of yourself and leave. But yeah. I'm not going to change. <laughs> he, tells, he tells this great story where a reporter took a transcription of his stage act, took a quote out of context, put it in the newspaper, and then someone read the newspaper about children with disabilities. A father read that to his like seven or eight-year-old in a wheelchair, and she got offended. And then he wrote him, he wrote in an article saying, my daughter was offended by this joke. <laughs> and Jimmy Carr's like, first of all, um, your daughter shouldn't be hearing this joke. Your daughter shouldn't be in the club. It was taken out of context. Nothing is funny. And what kind of father are you to do this anyway? It's like, what is happening? And I really do think that one of the highest levels of emotional intelligence is being able to laugh at ourselves is really to look at our shadow, like the, the, the most ridiculous, ugliest, neediest, most immature, unconscious parts of ourselves. And when we're able to laugh at that, then I really believe we're being truthful, honest with ourselves. And we're also being completely compassionate because we're not beating ourselves up. We're not calling ourselves, you know, pieces of shit because of that, right? I think that's the highest form of enlightenment is to be able to laugh at ourselves. Is that because you've had to crush the ego in order to do so or like? No, I think the ego has to include it. It's when the ego goes, oh yeah, <laughs> I'm this great person and I do all this great work and da, da 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 and I still get separation anxiety when I have to pack to go on a trip. You know, I still get, I still feel like I'm three years old, like whatever the thing is, like, you know, instead of beating ourselves up, right? One of the things we do pretty well is we, we find ways to beat ourselves up. And I think when we have the courage to laugh at ourselves, either personally or as a culture, or when a comedian hands us a thought that is racist or a thought that is um, ugly or of some kind, and they say it out loud and we, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> it's because you're never going to squash all these parts of us. It's like, yeah, some part of my brain is hardwired to see everyone as other. And it's screwed and it's ridiculous and I have to rise above that constantly in order to live in a multicultural, diverse uh, household or neighborhood or world. And so it's like, I have to know that in some ways it's taught to us, obviously, through culture, very much so, like 90% of it. But there's also some part of us that's always like on alert. You know, I think you have to laugh at ourselves about all of these things and own it. If you want to hear the entire conversation I have with George Carlin's daughter, Kelly Carlin, about finding your voice, about fighting fear, about having the courage to step into your own art form. Click on the link right over there to hear the whole conversation.